So who are these Talibans? And where did they come from? The Taliban translated into Pashto, stands for students or seekers. Taliban are the students of Deobandi madrasas. Many Taliban leaders and fighters studied in Deobandi seminaries. Deobandis have their origin, in Deoband, India. But how did Taliban advance rapidly to conquer Afghanistan? In 1979, Afghanistan became the playground for the proxy war between Soviet Union, backing the Afghanistan government, and the United States, backing the rebels. The Soviets invaded Afghanistan to fight against Islamic extremism and Western encroachment. The US and CIA funded and armed Mujahedin militants fought the anti-communist war against the Soviets. Many Muslims from around the world volunteered to fight against the Soviets. One of them was a young Osama bin Laden. In 1989, several Soviet troops departed Afghanistan. After the collapse of the USSR in 1992, they fully withdrew their support to the Afghan government. After the withdrawal, the once Soviet-backed president, Mohammad Najibullah, resigned and was put under house arrest at the UN compound. The result, however, was a civil war in the country, between multiple terror groups. Hence Mujahedin and other groups signed the Peshawar Accord to form a new Islamic state of Afghanistan. Of the groups, the Taliban with support from Pakistan, emerged as the dominant group. This group was founded by Mullah Mohammed Omar and his Pakistani students, most of them refugees. By 1996, Taliban eventually took control of most of the country. After a failed attempt to flee to India, the Taliban executed the former president Najibullah and his brother. Taliban also implemented their version of Islamic law. They prevented girls from going to school and denied women the right to work. Legal punishments and executions took place in public. By 2001, the country looked like this, with the remaining militant groups forming the Northern Alliance. Only Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates recognized the new Taliban regime. At this moment, it's critical to review why the US invaded Afghanistan in 2001. On September 11, 2001, the US was attacked by the extremist group, Al-Qaeda. Their intentions for the attack on the US were clear. Al-Qaeda's base of operations was Afghanistan, and it was supported by the Taliban government. This triggered the war on terror. Hence the then US President, George W. Bush, issued an ultimatum to the Taliban. Close the facilities and hand over the leader of Al-Qaeda, Osama bin Laden. The Taliban rejected the ultimatum, and refused to surrender bin Laden. The US lent support to the Northern Alliance forces, and then brought in its own forces. The Taliban regime were quickly defeated by the US Army. At this point, the United States, with the assistance of its NATO allies, sought to stabilize and rebuild the country. Hamid Karzai was later chosen as Afghanistan's transitional president. In 2003, the US surprisingly shifted its focus from Afghanistan to Iraq, specifically Saddam Hussein. What is critical is that the decision to invade Iraq shortly after invading Afghanistan drew away the vital resources like military reserves and aid during the important early years of the occupation. In 2009, while the US was active in Iraq, here the control of Afghanistan looked like this. The scattered Afghanistan government control. Meanwhile, the blame game had already begun among the US political parties. You see, the US invasion of Afghanistan was ordered by the Republican, George W. Bush. After winning the 2008 US presidential election, Obama completely withdrew the US troops from Iraq, but reduced the troops in Afghanistan. In the 2012 presidential election, Republican Romney agreed with Democrat Obama that USA needs to get out of Afghanistan. In 2016, Republican Trump and Democrat Hillary Clinton both promised to take the USA out of Afghanistan. In the 2020 presidential election, Democrat Joe Biden promised he will take the USA out of Afghanistan, and Republican Trump promised the same. Finally, on April 2021, Joe Biden ordered the withdrawal of all the US troops from Afghanistan by September 11, 2021, and later confessed that he didn't regret the decision. We're going to continue to keep our commitment, but I do not regret my decision. Is a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. You don't it's, trust a, the it's, a, it's a silly question. Do I trust the Taliban? No, but I trust the capacity of the Afghan military. The U.S. politicians basically held the troops as their joystick in the Afghan Taliban battlefield. 
with millions of Afghani civilians' life at stake. Here both the parties knew the consequences of the withdrawal of US troops from Afghanistan. These could have been the three possible scenarios. A political settlement between the Taliban and the government. An all-out civil war in Afghanistan. The Taliban taking over the country. After US troops fled Bagram base in the middle of the night, the Taliban took over the Bagram prison and released 5,000 prisoners. Within few days after this incident, Afghanistan was totally under Taliban control, and this happened. Taliban conquered Kabul. Afghan President Azraf Ghani fled to Tajikistan. Chaos erupted and thousands of Afghans were desperate to take refuge. To sum up, this tragedy was years in making. The Taliban didn't care about liberalism. They didn't care about secularism. They didn't care about feminism. They only cared about establishing an Islamic government. And they have finally succeeded. Forget about the United Nations. The UN were not competent enough to intervene and settle the issue. America collectively wasted human lives, money, and their time for 20 years and it was all predictable. Today, a terror outfit is running a country, controlling its resources, politics and its borders. It's a security disaster in making, not just for Afghanistan but also for its neighbors. India has invested nearly $3 billion and has facilitated 400 projects in Afghanistan. Here India seems to have invested smartly in Afghanistan by building dams and people-friendly projects for native Afghans. China and Pakistan. Add the Taliban run Afghanistan into the equation, and India is under a serious threat. The terror groups Lashkari Tabar, Jaishi Mohammed, Tariqi Taliban Pakistan, and Lashkari Jangvi are being hired as advisors and administrators by the Taliban. What's common between all these terror groups? They all want Kashmir. 